no Scotland, Paul McStay. A defiant sea of green and white scars over there in the Brimlone Road stand. The most significant name missing from that Rangers team is Ali McCoy, who failed the fitness test this morning on his injured calf. But John Brown has recovered from his stomach ailment and he returns to the back four with young Stephen Presley dropping out. Peter Houstra and Alexei Mikhailichenko are on the bench. And to replace McCoy, manager Walter Smith opts for the experience of Dale Gordon, the £1.2 million signing from Norwich City, who played such an important part in winning the Battle of Britain against Leeds United at Ellen Road. Although whether he supports Mark Hately up front or not remains to be seen. And the Celtic manager Liam Brady has given a vote of confidence to the man who lost at home last week to Dundee United. So the strike force of Jerry Craney and Andy Payton get the chance to make amends for their failure to cash in on what Brady considered to be excellent outfield play in that match. And Joe Miller continues wide on the right. And it's the perfect stage for the club's most expensive signing, Stuart Slater, to establish his popularity among the Celtic fans. He starts his 24th consecutive match this afternoon with just that solitary goal against Aberdeen to show for his efforts. But his overall contribution to the side has been increasingly pleasing, his manager. And the referee this afternoon, Mr. Les Mottram from Wilson Town in Lanarkshire. Not only is he refereeing his first Old Firm match, he's actually spectating at the first in his life. The Celtic kick off in 1993, looking for better fortune than he enjoyed in 1992. Uh, one of the big successes, Tom Boyd there, has been impeded making that run forward. Dale Gordon was the culprit. And one of the main points of interest at the start is who is going to support Mark Hately up front, and it looks as though it will be Trevor Stephen who's given that task. But for the moment, Hately is back defending. Celtic have the first free kick of the match. Tony Mowbray has moved into the area. Taken there by Collins. Hately marking Mowbray. It reaches Joe Miller. The ball is out of play. It's a goal kick to Rangers. Well, Drew Miller has spelled out of the side and came back into the starting lineup against Dundee United a week ago. So he's the chance again to make an impression against Rangers, which he certainly has done in the past. Collins sending it back for Galloway. Durant's header. Got a teammate outside him. Finds only Joe Miller. Fine play there by Brown. And Tony Mowbray is in some trouble. Took a knock early on there, and he's limping quite badly at the back. Was he in Ferguson? Helped by McCall. Was very tough indeed in the middle of the field there, with Ferguson and McCall winning that particular battle for Rangers. Person tried to get that beyond Boyd. It's excellent play from Celtic. Boyd is away from Ferguson. Powerful running on the flank. Plenty of support waiting in the middle. And that took a deflection, did not. Well, the referee says no. He's given a goal kick, but it was superb play by the Scotland defender Tom Boyd. And referee Mottram's had his attention drawn to the plight of Tony Mowbray who's clutching his right leg there. So here was Boyd, who had left Ian Ferguson for dead in this burst up the left flank, coming inside. He had Peyton and Trini waiting in the middle. The shot goes wide of the target, but it was superb play from Boyd. And Mick Martin, the Celtic coach, on the track, clearly concerned about the possibility of losing Tony Mowbray so early in the match. Well, for the moment, at least, Mowbray will continue. Headed by Collins. Hately with Galloway underneath that. There's no free kick given. Celtic were hoping for one. That's a great tackle by Collins. Miller now to McStay. Forced to turn back there. And brought down heavily by Ian Ferguson. Well, that top two on the Rangers midfield. McCall and Ferguson making the presence felt early on. They know the ability of McStay and Collins. 
The tackling is very tough indeed. This time it's a free kick to Celtic. Slater trying to link up with Peyton Slater again. That's a great pass. Here's Craney. Well, Joe Miller is complaining. He was available for a ball played across the face of the goal. But Craney's natural instincts tell him to have a go at goal from here. Clearly onside. Durant having a look there for Joe Miller as Craney drove the ball across. Good play this, though, by Stuart Slater. What a, an outstanding pass it was, opening up the Rangers' defence. And Andy Gordon did appear to have his angles right for Rangers. But the substitution will be made. It's a serious blow, this, to Celtic, without question. Looks like a pulled thigh muscle, perhaps, for Tony Mowbray. And Peter Grant is the replacement. And I fancy that Mark McNally may well go to centre-half beside Mike Galloway. With Grant going to right back, and that does appear to be the Celtic ploy. Person's head up. Grant playing it along. Peyton was caught offside. Ferguson towards Gordon. Grant in quickly on Hatley. Here's McPherson. Good play that by McPherson. Did well to get the cross in. As he was being challenged all the way by Slater. Came off the head of Brown. It's a great chance for Andy Payton for the opening goal for Celtic. Payton against Gorham. Superb goalkeeping by Andy Gorham. Problem's still not over, though. There's John Collins. Well, a wonderful opportunity goes, a begging for Celtic. John Brown's header caused the problem. Played Peyton onside. Coming in here and Gorham. They just look at Andy Gorham here. Jockey for position. Closing off the angle. And then Miller set up. McStay, then Collins for the final shot at goal. Well, a couple of chances there, undoubtedly, to Celtic. Here's Trevor Stephen. McCall, winning two, playing in the centre of midfield with Ian Ferguson. This is Durant. McCall, that's for Gordon. Boy trying to find Galloway with a pass inside. Well, Celtic survive in defence, but it wasn't too convincing that bit of play between Boyd and Galloway. Gordon is onside. Hatley waits in the middle. It's played in early. And Mark McNally did just enough. Getting to the ball first. Well, this was an excellent chance. McNally keeping an eye on Hatley, trying to get the ball first. He did well there with that slice clearance. Robertson's header reaches Ferguson. Now Brown. And Goff. Ferguson is back in the field. Appears to be fully fit. That's for Gordon. And the tackle there came from Mike Galloway appeared to be a shade reckless and that's the referee's view diving into the tackle there and Gordon the referee's given the free kick and there couldn't be any argument about that I reckon well in fairness to Galloway he did play the ball there and Dale Gordon passes up the best chance of the match so far right on the six yard line there's Dale Gordon getting to that and he will undoubtedly feel he should have hit the target with this. Played in by Ian Durant. Gordon was there. Frustration there for Dale Gordon. Only scored twice so far this season. That certainly was an excellent chance. Here's Peyton. Now Miller. outside David Robertson, that's a great cross and a fine move from Celtic excellent wing play there by Joe Miller, the header came from Andy Payton he got in in front of his marker extremely well for this just look at Payton here, 
getting it just ahead of Goff. Good play in the wing by Miller. And Andy Payton took a bump on the head for his trouble. It wouldn't have mattered had he found the net, though. Cool. Now Hately. Here's Mark Hately again. There's a fine effort by Hately. Well, and what is reckoned to be his weaker foot to right, but what an excellent effort this is. Showing very good touch on the ground here, Hately. Stepping away there from Joe Miller, looking up and trying to bend that beyond Pat Bonner with his right foot. The call to Durant, who's onside. Face now by McNally. Good play by Durant. And Bonner is just enough to beat that away from Hately. Not the most convincing spot of goalkeeping, perhaps, but it was effective enough. Down goes Goff. Penalised there was Andy Payton. There's the cross from Durant. And Bonner at full stretch, just touching that away from Hately's head. Ferguson playing it in. There's Hately and Stephen! Celtic. Paul McStay considering the options. Looking there for Boyd. And John Brown turns the ball away. An anxious moment there for Rangers in defence. The first real sign of uncertainty there. Ball played in by McStay. It appeared to be well under control from Dale Gordon, but he stumbled there under pressure from Tom Boyd. Calm play by Brown. Goff wins it well, and McStay couldn't get over the shot. So a respite for the Rangers defence just on half-time now. In fact, the half-time whistle has gone. Rangers go in with a one-goal lead, which they overall play just about merits. Trevor Stevens supplied it, but it was a moment to save her without question for a football purist. The ball plated in here by Ian Ferguson. Mark Hately finding himself there in space and Trevor Stephen finished with that deadly header and that's what separates the team at half-time it's Rangers 1, Celtic nil. Well, Rangers certainly grew in stature as that first half wore on and around the time when they scored the only goal of the first half they looked to be good value for that but Celtic did start very impressively and they were looking to do just that again but derive some benefit from their efforts at this stage in the match. Trevor Stevens headed back. Here's Durant. Good running by David Robertson. That was well read by Bonner. Fine goalkeeping. Joe Miller in a deep position there, playing it long, and there's no real prospect of Andy Payton doing much with that. John Brown is there for Rangers. There's Durant. And now McCall. 
Ferguson to McPherson. The Rangers passing in the second half of the first half really was very impressive indeed in such frantic surroundings. Walter Smith coming down from his seat in the director's box on a couple of occasions to preach that particular gospel to keep passing the ball. It certainly does appear to be paying off for Rangers. Here's Craney. Holding off Goff. Behind Peyton, allowing Roberts the challenge. Here's Trevor Stephen. Durant to Stephen. That's for Robertson. Durant again. John Brown takes over. The pass intended for Stephen. Grant now to Miller. Plenty of movement inside. Peyton and Craney are there. Free kicks being given. Stephen, the goal scorer, back defending. Paul McStay driving it in. And a scramble there for Richard Goff, who adjusted his footing extremely well to get the ball away. Certainly was in trouble just for a split second. Gordon to McPherson. This is Goff. Caught off balance. Here's Collins. To the gap it goes as Collins is brought down late. The Celtic supporters are incensed behind Andy Gorham. There was no free kick. Now Durant. Faced by Grant. That's from a call. And the recovery tackle with a good one made by Joe Miller. Well, Stuart McCall made an excellent run here, but you'll see the part played by Joe Miller, who came back tracking very quickly indeed to do just enough. There he was to make that challenge. Corner kick taken by Durant. And Pat Bonner was at full stretch there, realising the menace provided by Mark Haightley in particular. Goff to McPherson, good play. This is Stephen, now Gordon. Ferguson had to be strong there to resist the challenge from Boyd. Call to Durant. It's a second chance there. Here's David Robertson. That's cut off there by Bonner. Target was Haitley once again, but a lot of passes there put together by Rangers. Celtic are finding it increasingly difficult to do anything about that. Haitley's offside. Slow coming back. Mottram has his attention drawn to Brian O'Neill and Andy Payton is coming off. Clearly in some discomfort and pain, Payton. And we'll see again what happened to Andy Payton as he pulled up there, muscle damage at the back of the leg, the hamstring. That's why he's off, Brian O'Neill is on, so some reorganisation required again by Celtic, pushed O'Neill forward wide on the left for this free kick for the moment, Galloway fires it in. Celtic have now committed both substitutes, losing Mowbray and Peyton to injury. This is Collins. No way past Goff there for Slater. with Boyd. Trainees lay off, there's Slater. Good play from Celtic. Well, Slater would have enjoyed that all right, but it was very well laid into his path by Jerry Craney. Kept it down well, Slater, but Gorham was well positioned. Well down to positioning here, Gorham making this look easy because of his positioning. John Brown. Durant becoming more and more involved in the play now. As well read by Galloway. Good play in midfield from Celtic. Slater and McStay exchanging passes. Here's Slater taking on Richard Goff. Back to Miller. There's Brian O'Neill. Well, it was an opportunity again passed up by Celtic. Stuart Slater doing so well initially, but when the Ball landed at the feet of Brian O'Neill, he would have been expecting to hit the target, but Slater was certainly troublesome again 
the Rangers defence running at them at pace. Jordan looking for Haitley. That's towards Stephen. Galloway went for that in very positive fashion. Well, Celtic are finding it extremely difficult to demonstrate the same kind of passing fluency as Rangers when they have possession. Clumsy challenge that by Robertson. Free kick to Celtic. They're on the hour mark now. Rangers are still leading by that Trevor Stephen goal in the first half. Craney. McNally. Now Boyd. Miller has crossed to the left. That's good illusion running there by Miller. Well, he's made some very good positions away in the flank but he has never been able to deliver a really telling cross this is a good play look at the way he turns Dale Gordon inside out but having done all the hard work with plenty of players waiting in the middle couldn't find any of them and Brian O'Neill playing wide on the right now Celtic going with McStane Collins in the centre midfield against Ferguson and McCall that's a good pass from McStay, here's Slater, playing it early for Craney. The save is made by Gordon. The best chance of the second half to Celtic. And the Scotland goalkeeper spreads himself superbly for this. It's a very good move, the pass reaches Jerry Craney. And Gordon kept his eye on the ball. Had it away by Ian Ferguson. This is Slater. Chance for Rangers to break. Well taken down by Paul McStay. He was very determined there. Ferguson picks up the loose ball, linking with Durant. High hopeful ball through the middle, which shouldn't really trouble Richard Goff. Now Collins space for himself extremely well it's been a very good second half for Celtic Collins now Boyd very awkward ball after Gordon he took no chances in the end oh, he's another fine match to at left back Tom Boyd he's very quick indeed in this position getting enough space to get in the cross angling away Mikhailichenko is going to come on. A replacement for Ian Durant. Substitution for Rangers. Off comes number 11, Ian Durant. Well, Durant has certainly come on well this afternoon, but manager Walter Smith clearly believes he's done enough. Ferguson's pass. Balls Mikhailichenko straight away. for Haitley. Good header that by Collins. Knew exactly what he was doing. Finding Boyd with a head flick on. And here's Joe Miller. Testing the pace of McPherson. Slater. That's for Boyd. A bit of battling going on inside the area there. Craney and Robertson together. There's a mistake. A chance is on for Collins. And still Celtic in front of goal. An error there by Dale Gordon with a pass. Collins tried to beat Gordon at the far post. Once again, the keeper appeared to have the angles exactly correct. And I can tell you that the Rangers manager, Walter Smith, is not at all happy at this point of the match. He's on the track with instructions and he's certainly not looking pleased with the way things are going. This may help, though. Robertson blocked inside the area. Celtic on the counter attack now with Slater. Well, broke off O'Neill. Slater is quick, but not quick enough. And Andy Gordon didn't relish that. Craney sliding into the challenge. The referee comes across. 
Well, John Brown was leaving that to Andy Gordon. Kenny going for that with complete conviction. Well, it's a very difficult decision for a striker, that. And he really has to go to try to play the ball. Gordon has been through that all so many times before. It was good goalkeeping. Tony Mowbray still hasn't left the bench. Looking on anxiously. Tommy Craig there on the track also. The Celtic try to save the game. Karachenko. Ferguson. Trying to play that with the space for Dale Gordon. Day. Chance it on this time. And once again, the ball is cleared off the goal line. The chance passed up right in front of goal by John Collins. It was a great move, this from Celtic. Magnificent play. McStay's final pass, setting up Collins to try to take his time, but Gordon again did brilliant play, and then it was cleared off the line. Headed away this time by Gore. And now Rangers on the break. Well, John Collins, I think, guilty of taking perhaps too long and allowing Gorham to close him down. Well, he looked almost too confident there in front of goal. The outcome is that Rangers still lead. Joe Miller chasing this. Ferson gets there first. There's Boyd. Now Slater. Miller's out of the play. He's left the field of play. And not enough space for Slater. Well, it really was a great chance, this. John Collins in position. Magnificent pass from McStay. And Collins waiting till that came onto his left foot, his stronger foot. And David Robertson made the clearance. John Miller. Goes to Collins. Grant calls for the ball. And impeded there by Mikhailichenko on the run. Peter Grant just outside the area. Mikhailichenko protesting his innocence. A good promising move, that. Celtic. Up to a halt by Mikhailichenko. Played in by Collins. Uh, looks so composed and assured, Andy Gordon tends to make things look straightforward. Very good catch from a well-struck shot. There was a four-man Rangers wall, which Collins was trying to beat. Went round it all right, but got him in just the right place. There's Slater. Now McStay. Turning well inside the area, goes stumbling now in the clash with Goff. McStay thought that should have been a penalty, He's still protesting to the referee. Gordon picks it up for Rangers. Well, the tackling's getting even tougher. Brian O'Neill involved there on the call, and O'Neill's already been booked. Paul McStay protesting bitterly to the referee about that decision. Well, certainly controversial. Here was McStay going wide of Cobb, then checking back inside. Well, he may well have had a case there, but the referee couldn't have been better positioned. But stage in the match, you must feel some sympathy for Paul McStay. Walter Smith clearly anxious about these closing stages. Just about a minute remaining. Corner kick's been given. Tom Boy can scarcely believe that. And the referee's overruled the linesman. So relieved. Well, we're inside the final minute now. Very little stoppage time. Chase on here for Slater. McPherson stretching his long legs to try to get there first. It came off Slater last. It's a goal kick to Rangers, and that may well be the last opportunity for Celtic. Trevor Stevens scored the goal, which may well have won the match for Rangers. 
Celtic have given it all in the second half, but it appears in vain. Here's Marchetti testing it down as the final whistle goes. Rangers start 1993 the way they finished in 1992. Trevor Stephen with that magnificent headed goal in 33 minutes wins the match and sends Rangers marching on in the race for the league title. Celtic now battled manfully throughout that second half. They passed up two great chances, one by Jerry Craney midway through the half, then later by John Collins. And, of course, they had that penalty claim right at the end when Paul McStay was brought down by Richard Goff. But in the end, Rangers did show a little bit more composure, a little bit of extra class. John Collins bitterly disappointed, no doubt, by the fact that he missed that great chance to equalise. But in the end, it's Rangers who win the points. It's Rangers 1, Celtic 0. How do you rate that goal among the ones you've scored in your time here? Uh, I rate it very highly. I think it was a good goal um, and an important goal. And for me personally, it was one of the, one of the finest moments of, uh, of my career, certainly certainly Ibrox, if not my whole career. So um, I was delighted with it. Did you realise the chance was going to be on from the point the ball was released by Ian Ferguson? Well, with Mark Hately in your team, he's always going to create things in the box. And uh, he actually had the opportunity to take the ball himself, but um, gave me the opportunity to put the ball in the net. And I managed to guide, that, guide the ball inside the far post, so I was delighted to see it go in. Overall, did you feel it was a, a difficult match for Rangers? It turned out that way. We, I think we made it difficult for ourselves, but uh, full credit to Celtic, they really battled hard and played some good football. Uh, to be quite honest, better than we did today. Uh, we know we didn't play as well as we can, um, but as, again, it's, a, it's the two points that we've uh, come away with. So uh, Aberdeen, again, have dropped a point today, so it all helps us, so uh, we're pleased.